Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to this really cool video we have here tonight for you. I want to introduce to you the core four right here. We got Justin Rogers, Cody Yarbrough, Mike Vidan, and myself. And tonight we're going to talk to you about something really cool, and I think you're going to be interested in it. The, the four pillars to a successful wash empire. You guys are in the pressure washing business. You're looking to, to ramp your business up and get more leads, scale, learn how to market, learn how to use your equipment properly, how to troubleshoot. Well, us four guys have been in the business probably a, a cumulative amount, about 50 years or so. So before we jump into this video, we have an event coming up here, WashCon Live. It's going to be in Nashville, Tennessee. want to make sure that you get your tickets now. It is 2022, February 11th and 12th. So tickets will be first link in the description first link in the comments make sure that you grab them so you can be there and not miss it so cody the first pillar to a successful wash empire i would think and a lot of guys would agree with me is the equipment cody tell me a little bit about getting started equipment what equipment you need your take on this yeah so we can broaden the topic a little bit outside of the realm of equipment um but you're talking about the same thing what you're really talking about is fulfillment right and that's what guys usually panic on first is okay how am i going to do x wouldn't matter what business you were in how am i going to deliver the goods in our business uh the physical thing you have to have is some kind of equipment whether it's homemade diy we've all been there uh we build custom well, i would say semi-custom rigs a bunch of rigs back here in the shop um dozens every every month so the here we're going to talk about it i'm going to speak to it right now but as we go through this this talk tonight i want you guys to take away the fact that the equipment is not the linchpin uh in your success or failure it's definitely something you got to have i think because it's a tangible you can actually put your hands on it and see it you know right there in the driveway that it gets you know i would say the bulk if 80 percent of the attention that guys put if you were to look at your business as a pie it's the the massive piece of pie that that guys focus on so much um and i love that because i'm an equipment builder i'm an equipment manufacturer but what i try to do is help the guys out long term so they can be successful we try to bring in these other pieces of the pie that complement you know what you're able to do as far as keeping customers if you don't have all of this that we're going to go through all you have is equipment and that's not a business that's just uh something shiny out there in the driveway so Equipment is important. Let's go back and talk about uh, why you need it. Why do you, what do you need and why do you need it? Well, in today's world of washing, uh, there's a lot of ways you can skin the cat, but what we're talking about basically is uh, pressure washing and usually soft washing combined. It's some combination of those things on a rig, whether it's a skid, a trailer, uh, a professional built system, a homemade system, you want to be able to apply chemicals and understand how to do that. And then, pressure wash when you need to. So what do you need? You know, what do you need to be able to do that? Our lowest end uh, skid that we build is a mini skid. Uh, a fully functional one would be like a mini skid pro. So a four gallon machine, baby, you know, you do plenty of work with that. It's, it's obviously not where you're going to stay forever, but a four gallon and a simple, easy to use 12 volt will make you tons of money. And as you get established and start growing, you go up from there to your five gallon a minute, you know, belt drive or gear drive units, eight gallon a minute, we're actually going to be giving away a 10 gallon a minute trailer at WashCon in February. That thing's going to be a beast. It's almost a $30,000 trailer. Uh, but I caution guys always on the equipment, you know, this is one pillar, but don't get so focused on equipment that this is the only one you see because it is a tangible. The other ones, a lot of times we, we don't want to put any attention on them and they're actually more important than the equipment. You know, I've seen that a lot where guys get really hung up on the equipment in the beginning and it, it seems like like you what you were saying, they're laser focused on equipment, equipment, equipment. How do I build this stuff? And I started with a Home Depot rig, right? Like I had to make some money and rent. And so, Cody, you know, talk a little bit to that just briefly about, you know, what guys may need to get started or something like that. Some of these guys are going to be brand new who are coming to WashCon and they're wanting to learn the tips and, and shed some light on that. Well, you know. If you're brand new getting into it, we, we love a 12 volt system as far as the soft wash side because it is so user friendly and it's so low cost of, of ownership that the 
uh, the overhead and keeping it running is not going to be even. It's so cheap and easy. It's time to drop in the bucket. So while you're learning all this other big stuff, you know, website and SEO and marketing and all these other things that are, are going to be hard or maybe a little difficult for you, at least you don't have to worry too much about keeping your rig running. So that's that's kind of where we're at. We love those systems. That's We've built over a thousand rigs um, in the field in the last few years. So that's where we're at on soft washing. Uh, it's very versatile. You can clean all kinds of stuff from roofs, stucco, driveways, vinyl siding, hardy plank, uh, you name it. If it's organic, you can clean it with a 12 volt soft wash system, really any soft wash system. But um, I try to me and Mike maybe could talk about it at WashCon. While we don't like some of the more fancy systems because they wind up being a lot of trouble. Um, so you got to have that. And then at least a four gallon on the pressure wash side. That's kind of the 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 bottom of the rung as far as commercial grade. You can use a direct drive. I mean, it's it's not ideal, but a little direct drive, four gallon, run it two seasons, you know, get your feet wet, no pun intended, and uh, then start upgrading from there to a gear belt drive units. And and the sky is really the limit. We've had customers buy a $7,000 mini skid, and then the next year, you know, they just realize, holy crap, I just made $200,000. Now I'm ready to upgrade to some, some fancier stuff. But you don't need to start it fancy. If you got the budget for it, that's fine. Um, the next thing we wanted to talk about, I'll, I'll pitch it over to Mike a little bit with the equipment is, OK, how, how do you use this stuff? Right. Anybody can go like me, Mike, we could go to Home Depot right now and spend two grand on electrical lineman pliers and Klein and all this stuff. And all right, by God, we're HVAC tech. But if you don't have the knowledge in here, is any of that stuff going to do you any good? You really need some training to go along with that. Right. Right. Absolutely. And that's that's one of the things that, that I talk about and we all talk about all the time is the fact that anybody can go buy a pressure washer. Every homeowner in America or in, in the world has the ability to go to Home Depot or go to Lowe's and pick up a you know five, six hundred dollar pressure washer and get out there and do the job. But if you don't know how to use the equipment properly, if you don't know what chemicals to use, then you have the potential of causing a tremendous amount of damage. And what we are going to talk about and one of the one of the most important things is you know we've got the equipment, we've got we've got the, the tools in our in our tool belt in order to perform the work. Now what we need to do is figure out how to do the work. And without, like Cody said, without the proper training, uh, you know, you're just sitting there with some equipment. You're sitting there with a pretty trailer, a shiny skid. And while that's really cool, it's not making you any money. So you have to have a very good foundation, a very good basis of how to operate. And what, what we're going to teach you, and, and one of the most important things, is having that training and having that ability to go out and know what chemicals that you're going to use when you're washing whatever surface it is, um, how to mix those chemicals so you're not potentially causing damage or harming your customer's property. Um, and, and that liability, that's very important. And we need to understand uh, not only how to wash and how to mix, but how to effectively go out and perform these jobs. Because when you go to a residential job site, you are dealing with so many different surfaces. You've got concrete, you've got brick, you've got stucco, you've got wood siding, you've got wood decking. And then, you know, with all of these things, you've got numerous incarnations or, you know, you've got all kinds of different services within those. You've got ePay, you've got, you know, different types of woods. Uh, so it's unbelievably important for, you know, the, to have a firm knowledge and understanding of, of, of how to clean, right? How to wash, so to speak. And, and, you know, that training is without a doubt, probably one of the most important things uh, when you're starting a pressure washing business. Yeah. I, I'm going to jump back in here real quick, Aaron, but um, we saw this at one of our recent serious starters. Um, guys were like, well, do I really need that training? The answer is you don't need it. Like you'll figure it out, you know, but at what cost is the question is, is it going to take you a year, 18 months to, to really figure out what you're doing? Um, I did that. I did it the long. I didn't take any courses. Now I've got I've got 20 years. Right. Dad was one of the founders of roof cleaning. Dude was cleaning roofs in 1987, like pre uh, it was the Flintstone days. Dad slid down the back of a brontosaurus, clocked out and went and cleaned roofs on the side. But <laughs> we learned the, the longest, hardest way. If I could go back and redo, I would have just went and took some training somewhere and jumped that learning curve. The good thing about our industry, guys, is it's not rocket surgery. Right. But. But it's also not like you see guys post on the group sometimes, the forum, Facebook stuff. They'll say, 
well, you don't need any training. It's not that hard. Well, it isn't to that guy right now because he's, he's <laughs> poor. He doesn't remember how mystical and, you know, full of questions he was at month two. So all that is easily forgotten once you arrive. But all, all these guys that are still back here, take some <clears> training <throat> and uh, shorten your learning curve, man. It's well worth it. Absolutely. You know, very well put, Mike, Cody, the equipment and the importance of, of learning how to do things properly and also how to not destroy stuff in the process, right? Hey, that insurance bill is heavy, all right? <laughs> uh, and and, and we, we have that insurance for a reason because there is a high potential to have issues. And, you know, again, it, it all goes back to this this core basis of knowledge that we have to have. And, and it's not just like, and I say it and I say it somewhat jokingly is anybody can go out and pressure wash. Right. But running a business, knowing the things that you need to have in place, like insurance, like, like, you know, being by licensed by whatever your municipality requires, like these are important things. And without those things, you know, you, you are exposing yourself to liability that you don't want to expose yourself to. So, you know, these are all things that we cover. These are all things that, you know, we're going to, we're going to talk about at WashCon. Um, and it's, it's, it's more than just washing. It's, it's about a business. Like anybody can wash. We're the, the, the focus is, is, is how to succeed in a business. Right. And this is a business. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to throw it back to the other guys. I just wanted to say that. Absolutely. Absolutely. How to ramp it up really quick, cut the learning curve. You know, we got a lot of guys who are making six figures their first year. Yep. Cody, you remember Dewey Atchison and we got a bunch of guys. We got about eight different uh, individuals in the inner circle who are doing six figures their first year in this business. And that's because, you know, it's funny is all of those guys have taken some sort of training from right. us and so let's go ahead and segue into the importance of marketing and we got one of our good our good marketing jedi geniuses here on the line justin rogers dude forever self-employed you know talk about that short term that that instant gratification marketing that a lot of young guys need when they're just getting started right they, they they're passing flyers they don't want to hustle down the road throwing out flyers figuring this thing out but you have mastered a way of getting leads on the cheap that convert. Talk a little bit about that, Justin. Absolutely. So one of the most important things that I think is having a diversified marketing plan, because obviously if we're reliant on one source for our marketing and that slows down, then our business is pretty much out of order at that point. So what I really want to focus on is showing you guys kind of like the evolution of your business and how your business can evolve, how your marketing can evolve with your business pretty much. So um, just given multiple ways to have those you know, leads coming in um, and kind of market for where you're at in your business. I think a lot of guys get into the business and maybe they start with flyers, maybe they start with some other things, and that's all they know for the lifetime of their business. So I'm really going to come in and speak to a bunch of different marketing techniques so that way we can diversify where our lead flow is coming from and that way we can have a bunch of leads coming in from a bunch of different sources and for marketing where we are at in our business. Because obviously, guys who are just starting out, it's going to be a lot. It's going to look a lot different than guys who have been in the business for as long as Mike had it has been for 20 years. You know, obviously, he's got some longer game uh, marketing strategies that are providing a ton of leads for him. Uh, but in the beginning, we got to do some different stuff. So we're going to be focusing on, you know, some minute stuff like some flyers and things like that and, and some key components of ads and marketing in general that work across the board. Um, so that way it's not just flyers. It's not just Facebook ads, but you can almost implement these tech, these techniques across the board. Um, now, Facebook ads is something that I've, you know, that I've spent a lot of time and money in. And um, I just I have some proven tactics for some things that work, both residential and commercial. So I'll be sharing with you guys. Everything that works with regards to Facebook ads, running those, you know, what the demographics look like, what the copy on the ad looks like. Are we doing pictures? Are we doing videos? Um, just sharing everything that I have on Facebook ads. And trust me, guys absolutely kill with this information. We've had guys who have landed like $5,000 parking garages, commercial jobs, residential jobs, just huge stuff. So um, I'm going to be talking about all of that. And um, like I said, that's going to kind of segue us into our longer game marketing strategies. I'm also going to talk about how we can get some um, free leads from things like Facebook, Nextdoor, things like that. But the longer game stuff is going to feed us over time 
What I'm going to be talking about is more Facebook ads, things that are going to feed us in the short term. Aaron, I mean, speak to what it's going to look like with the GMB stuff on your end, because it's kind of like a multi-pronged marketing approach with both of us. I'm going to kind of uh, toss it up to you and you're going to slam it in with the long term stuff. And then y'all be able to get some short term results with what I'm going to be talking about. So it just seems like delayed gratification is the story of my life. That's, that's <laughs> kind of become, become the meme of my existence. But yeah, Google is, is definitely delayed gratification. And we're, we're going to be talking about some of the, the longer form, longer term, uh, what I like to call crockpot marketing, right? Where, you know, it needs to simmer. It needs to, to steep a bit to get a little stronger. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to dive into your Google, my business, how to optimize it, which you would probably not be surprised how many people's uh, uh, Google, my business I see who are just uh, all over the place. They're not optimized and they don't know what they're doing. And, and, and consequently they're not getting the amount of leads. And frankly, it's kind of free leads. They're not getting a, a, a large portion of the amount of leads that they could be getting. I'm also going to be diving into a content strategy for you, um, that you can do yourself or that you can outsource that has provided me with massive authority for many key terms that I want to rank for in my local market, I rank for nationally or worldwide. And so I'm going to be kind of uh, transitioning that knowledge to you uh, via WashCon. I'm going to be going over all of this stuff for you guys to where you can uh, strategically implement this laser focus. We're not flailing all over the place trying to figure it out anymore. Uh, over those two days, we are going to put this knowledge in your hands and you're going to be able to go back to your market and implement and frankly, just be probably about a year and a half, two years ahead of the curve of, of everyone else. So that's, ex you know, Google is definitely a long form game. It's something that you have to stick with. It's something that you have to continue with and you have to be Honestly, if you'll just do that, you can win. But it's also knowing the right things to implement at the right time. So that's what we're going to go over. Yep, it's going to be really cool. Uh, it's going to be at the Standard in Nashville, which is a really cool place. Um, so Nashville's awesome town. I'm so glad it's not in Atlanta. Me and Aaron, are still in, <laughs> me and Aaron are about Atlanta out. All right, <laughs> uh, this will be our, I guess, third big event. We've done a few over here in my training room, serious starter boot camps. But guys that took the serious starter are just light years ahead. Um, we've got nothing but positive feedback. Now we're adding two more blocks of instruction. So the tickets, oddly enough, we ain't even told anybody about this. And we've already sold like a fair good little amount of tickets. So. <laughs> Uh, I don't exactly remember how many, but it's it's a little little bit. We're like, dang, we ain't even sold nobody and we're selling tickets. So. <laughs> well, and, and that's the other component that we haven't talked about is at the standard, it is a very exclusive club. It's not a huge place. We have the capacity for 100 people, right? We're doing 90. Barely. Yes. Barely, right? <laughs> so you, you can't bring your kid, you can't bring your dog, but we've got um, we've got 100 spaces available. We're selling 90 regular standard tickets and we're selling 10 of the VIP roundtable tickets. And we'll get into that more. There's going to be a, like, like Aaron said earlier, there's a link below and uh, you can check out everything that, that, that is available. Not only, you know, the, the skid that we're giving away or the, the trailer, Tra yeah. the trailer that we're giving away from Southeast Softwash, but there's what, like 15, $20,000 worth of other stuff that, that you have the opportunity to win with the purchase of this ticket. And remember, there are only a hundred tickets. So your opportunity to win is I'm no mathematician, but it's pretty high. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it is they ain't even a hundred no more. They, they no, no, pay. shoot. There's way less. And and the crazy thing is we've sold more VIP tickets than we have regular tickets. I think we've because, only got five VIPs left and I think we've sold uh, I think we're about 85 regular tickets if I'm if I'm remembering right. So yeah. we've sold a good many. If you guys are wanting to come, um, you need to jump, jump on it now because this is really the first time we've actually talked about it publicly. Right. So it, they're they're going to go fast and they're going to go they're going to go yep. quickly. Hey, let me talk about that trailer real quick that we're going to be giving away. So let me uh, let me grab my phone right here. I'm going to walk around and show you guys a similar trailer. So big truck outside going by. Uh, we build tons of these skids and trailer systems, all that stuff's ready to go out. It'll be similar to this. Okay, this is a five and a half gallon a minute. We got two eight gallon a minute trailers right here. All this stuff is completed. So it'll be pretty close to this, except 
major difference is it's going to have a 10 gallon a minute honda igx 800 here and that is going to power two pressure reels over here so you'll have a pressure reel here as well as here if you're running them both at the same time you'll have two basically two five gallon a minute pressure washers if not you shut one of them off you've got a 10 gallon a minute uh monstrosity and then on the soft wash side we're going to do a regular 12 volt just like you see and then we're going to do one of the new 24 volt uh beasts so it'll have two two systems two soft wash systems 124 112 of course the whole thing will be lined with bed liner led lights it's also going to get I don't think I told the guys this yet. We're going to put a Smart Blend Pro, which is the first of its kind in the industry, remote control blending capabilities on there. So it's going to be about a twenty-seven, twenty-eight thousand uh, dollar trailer. So it ain't it ain't no little rinky dink rig. It's it's going to be like the the coolest thing we've built here in a long time at the shop. So. She okay. Well, so with all that being said, I'm buying two tickets right now because <laughs> uh, I want that trailer. Also, VIP tickets get double the entries, so yeah, exactly. Absolutely, very, very cool. So, and Mike, you want to talk about the uh, scaling piece of it? I know that's probably the last, the last, yeah, to wrap it up. Yet. Yeah, yeah. So, um, let's let's talk about the fourth pillar. And I want to say that without the other three pillars, uh, you're going to have a really hard time scaling your business. Scaling your business is about uh, it's more than just growth, right? And we we that that's that's our our strategy when we start a business is is to get more customers, is to grow our business. Uh, and you can grow your business, but that doesn't mean you are able to handle the increased workload, right? Uh, in fact, growth can actually have a negative impact on your business if you can't deliver a quality service in a timely manner. And you have to be able to maintain that same high quality and be able to continue that same level of service that your customers expect. Um, because the last thing that you want to do is sacrifice quality or damage your name because you're out there trying to scale too quickly. Yep. So let's talk about scaling. And scaling means that you're able to take on the increased workload in a cost-effective manner and also meet the demands of your business without suffering or under-delivering to your customer. Because like I said, the last thing that you want to do is under-deliver to your customer because you've spent so much time building that trust, building your name, building your brand, and quality is everything you know the the we we talk about reviews all the time we talk about um the so you know just just every aspect of of developing your business and the last thing you want to do is damage any of that um and so when you're when you're scaling your business it means that you are first you know you you have to you're, you're already established in your business um and but you always need to be looking at the scalability of your business. And, and that's not just profit and that's not just growth. Um, so at WashCon, we're gonna be talking about your business plan and your sales and your marketing strategy. And we're gonna determine how scalable they are. Now with the VIP ticket, um, we're going to take, and we haven't even talked to you guys about what that is, but the VIP round table, it's a third day. So WashCon is two days with the VIP ticket. It's a third day. And we are going to take, uh, your business and we are going to completely dissect it. And we're going to get into this in a lot more depth, um, in, in more videos and, you know, other resources that you're going to be able to go and see exactly what you get. Um, but with that third day, we are going to dive deep into your business and we're going to analyze everything from your equipment. Cody's going to look at that and tell you what you need, what you, you know, we're going to look at your marketing efforts, your, your strategies for, for sale, everything. Right. And we're going to determine, you know, what you need to do in order to get to that next level and how to scale. Um, and the idea behind scaling your business is the expansion of your operations. So um, as your operation grows, you're going to have more customers, right? Uh, it's just inevitable. And you're likely going to need more resources and more people. And in order to achieve this, you have to have a good marketing funnel, which Aaron, myself, and Justin are going to be able to kind of point you in the right direction as far as the marketing efforts and, and, and having a good marketing strategy in place. And you're, you're also going to have to be able to purchase, purchase the right equipment, right? So you're going to have to have the funds available to you in order to scale. And how does, how do you get those funds? It's by having the right marketing in place right. to have the money in your bank account to be able to go and buy the equipment like that trailer from Southeast Softwash, um, as well as the vehicles in order to add more people 
so you can meet the demands of that increased business. So like, like I said, having all of these things in place is so important to having the ability to scale your business. So we're going to go over all the things needed in order, in order to achieve these things, right? And we're going to talk about hiring the right people, training them, and how to retain them. That is, that is one of the most important aspects uh, when you're starting to look at scaling your business. And then this is probably, besides the marketing piece, one of my favorite topics is automation. And, and scaling encourages automation. So one of the things that tops the list, if you wanna scale your business, is being able to automate your business and trying to expand your business without automating the core functions of how you run is not going to be easy. So automation is key. We know that uh, for the simple reason that it frees up time and it frees up resources and it makes things way more efficient and way more streamlined and it improves the customer experience. Uh, one of the main advantages of automation is that it lowers your expenditures and strengthens your financial base, right? And like we talked about, you need that strong financial base in order to scale, to, to hire people, to be able to pay people, to be able to buy the equipment, to be able to buy the trucks. And so uh, that's one of the major components of scalability. And one of the things that I see all the time, and it just drives me nuts, is um, people think that they have to go out and buy, uh, you know, fancy offices. They have to rent fancy offices or, or, or you know, hire assistants, hire all the, the staff. And like, you know, Cody is, is, he's the largest soft washing manufacturer in the world. So he needs all of that in place. But if you are, you know, if you've got a couple of trucks out there, you don't need an office. You don't need, you don't need all these people around you because what is that? That's overhead. And right. what does overhead do? It, it eats into your, your overhead or it eats into your profitability. Right. And that's right. the last thing that you need. So that's ego baby. Oh baby. That is 100% ego. And, and you know what we're about? We're about no ego and no ego means more profitability. So the bottom line, in order to scale efficiently and intelligently, you need to have in place a number of things, all of which we've covered here. And we're going to cover way, way, way more in depth uh, at WashCon in Nashville next year in February. And, um, you know, you need to have the proper equipment. You need to know how you, yeah, you have to have the knowledge uh, to, operate it, uh, to operate it effectively. You need to know how to clean and how to do it without hurting stuff, uh, the right detergents, the chemicals, how to mix all that stuff and do it safely and effectively. And you have to know how to get customers, right? Both long-term and short-term. And obviously we've got the folks here in the core four that are going to be able to absolutely nail down your strategies to make that happen. So, you know, again, you just need to know where to spend your money um, as far as all of these aspects, whether it's equipment, whether it's the training, whether it's, you know, your advertising, your marketing, uh, and then all of these things feed into your scalability. So that's about hey, all I, I got to say about that. I know this video, we're trying to wrap it up, but I want to ask Aaron a question because we both from Alabama, baby. So the, uh, the VIP thing, right? When I was thinking about what are we going to actually offer on this third day to make it worth, the, you know, worth your while? My mind instantly goes to all of the people who have told me, Aaron, you probably got some kin folks like this, but what you need to do and then proceed to fill in a bunch of really stupid ideas. And the longer, the further down the road and the, the more you grow and, you know, we're at the point now where we're doing multi-million dollars a year and stuff. And it's just, it's just a fact. Like you just learn stuff like, I would never take advice from that guy, right? Be it a, an uncle, a cousin, somebody, your brother-in-law who I do you what you need to do. And you're looking at him like, dude, you've never ran anything. You've never ran a lemonade stand. I'm doing, you know, X amount of hundred thousand a year on a wash truck. And it's very frustrating. Here's what you're getting coming to listen to us. We're not that guy. Okay. We've been where you guys are and we can look at your business from all those different angles. Mike was talking about a lot of stuff that he didn't even hit safety plan that you got one you probably need one all right i did seven years as a safety and osha compliance manager bookkeeping do you have that stuff figured out because these are the things that can torpedo your business uh the training and yes you know how but now do you know how to teach that to your your staff in an efficient ongoing manner right so you don't just train them one time you constantly are, are developing your people so if you've ever had somebody say that to you and it was like dude get out of my face you don't you don't know crap. Well, we do know crap. I mean, and then like Mike said, we're not, uh, we're not about ego, but facts is facts, baby. Like we, we've been there and I would never want someone to mentor me or train me that I'm not, I can't look at them and say, I want to get where they are. 
So the good thing about this group of guys is, you know, we can all speak to our individual accomplishments, but we, Justin's the largest social media guy in our industry by a factor of like 20 X. It's ridiculous. So tons of value there on that third day. Mike's been off the truck for 20 years. I know a lot of guys, they feel, you know, that Alabama Aaron talk about it, just that, that country. It's just know, broke. God, I'm That's all on it. the truck. It's just broke. That's all it is. It's how to how to stay broke is usually the the mentality. How to avoid doing anything that is gonna, you know, make life easier for you. Life being easier for you is a is a sin. You need to to sweat. You need to go through the difficulty constantly and never learn from your mistakes. There's some close to godliness, weird backwards thing going on there about you know not figuring it out. But I, I think. We definitely cover the four pillars of, of a successful wash empire in this video. And guys, if you want to come to WashCon, here's the deal. We're definitely going to put it to you cut and dry if you come. So be ready to hear it. Be ready. You know, we're going to compact a lot of knowledge into two days or three days if you're a VIP. Um, this is not a trade show. No. So <laughs> it's all training. So bring like two legal pads Sure. And maybe, a, you know, a couple <laughs> pencils, a couple Ticonderogas, all right, and uh, come ready to take notes because uh, we're going to we're going to hand it to you on a silver platter. So click the link in the description. First link in the comments. Grab your tickets, guys. We'll see you at WashCon.